Hi there, welcome to the Newfoundland Outsider and on this episode we're going fishing with an old bamboo fishing pole. Um, I grew up on the southwest coast and we just called them a trout pole. But today we're going to see if uh, I can still use this thing. Just a little guy. Ah, lost Whoa. The almighty snarl. So I'll show you what I got here. This is, a, this is an old bamboo uh, fishing pole here in Newfoundland on the southwest coast where I grew up. We just call, called them a uh, trout pole. This one is uh, 12 and a half feet long. And what you do is get yourself some uh, black backing. And I'll show you how to tie it. So what you do is you tie the first part right here in case you broke the tip of your rod off. So it'd be tied right here. And then you want up and you tie it on the very tip as well. And this is where you cast from. And then you put some black backing on it like that all the way down about the length of your rod and in the at the end of your fishing pole you put on some monofilament about six feet of monofilament and you just splice in your monofilament to your backing so you end up being about six feet longer than your rod then this is May month, early in the trout season, so we just use a little spinner and a hook. 
with the worm. And of course, back in the day, you had an old pail bottle for put your worms in. Because there wasn't much of anything else around then. So we put holes in the pail bottle so your worms could breathe. So we thought. Okay, you didn't want to hurt your worms and dare them smother on you <laughs> so that you could come out and put them on a hook <laughs> so they're just a little guy we'll let him go down here in the water That's a good one. That's a perfect little eating brookie there. Okay, when you were done fishing for the day, you would just take all your line and reel it on the, on the very back end of your uh, trout pole. And roll it all up and roll all the monofilament up as well. Or cat got we used to call it back in the day. I think that was a uh, that was a brand name. And then take your spinner and your hook and drive it in the end like that, and you were good to go. Okay. We ended up with a bunch of uh, nice little brook trout here. These are what we call pan trout here in Newfoundland. They're perfect eating trout, really red in, inside, and a little bit sweet tasting. And we did well with our bamboo pole here, our, our little uh, trout, trout pole. Yeah, so uh, I got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And here in Newfoundland, you're allowed 12. So we'll go down to the other pond and uh, try our luck down there. Okay, before we go down to the other pond, we're going to pack our trout and moss. Now moss here in Newfoundland has the ability to keep your fish really cool and preserve them during the hot summer days while you're fishing. Put some on the bottom and then put a layer on top. That's perfect. Even the loons are out fishing today. Looks like he's having a big old feast over there. Yep. Okay, we made it to the next pond. We could have stayed back there and caught and catch uh, catch more trout, but uh, it's a good idea just to catch a few trout in each pond. There's lots of ponds here. Just catch a few trout in each pond, and that will keep a healthy population for the uh, for the brook trout. And then every time you come back, you can still get your 12 trout, which is how many you're allowed to catch in a day here in Newfoundland. But the bugs are getting bad now because it's warmed up. We started this morning at, uh, it was one degree and there was frost on the window. And now it's uh, 14 degrees already and it's only uh, 10 after nine. So it's gonna be a warm day today. So we need a bit of, uh, bit of juice to 
to combat the flies. Before we start fishing in this pond, I'm going to uh, change my hook. And I bought my handy dandy little sucrick can because back in the day when you were fishing with a uh, bamboo trout pole, a sucrick can was your tackle box. And inside there, you always kept extra hooks and things. A bit of string, a can opener, all kinds of little neat things you kept in there for back in the day. Of course, you couldn't afford sucrits. So you found somebody that was always buying sucrits. And you asked them to save the can for you. And that's what we had. And it worked great. Got another one. Okay, we got one more pond I want to try, and then it's lunchtime. So we'll just wrap up our little trout pole here, get it ready for transport. There, let's try another pond. Okay, we're here to our third pond. We'll try and catch a couple here. We caught two, uh, two nice ones back in the other pond. So we'll catch a couple more, that'd be good for today. Ah, oh, little guy. Oh, that was quick. Oh, I got another one. <laughs> I wasn't even casting, I was uh, just walking up the shore there. And one got on another little one. Small guy. Ooh. I don't even want to go. <laughs> he came back. Okay, 
We'll take our moss out and we'll get it nice and cold with the water again. And you can see the trout is already stiff by being in the moss. And it's really cold actually. So we got nine fish. That's good. I caught four or five here, but they're little guys. So we'll just freshen up our moss. And put them back in the bag. Whoa. Perfect. Nine fish for supper. Okay, we ended up with nine trout. This last pond had a lot of small guys in it. Couldn't keep any. So now we're gonna make some lunch, because I'm hungry. Okay, back when I was growing up, you always kept a, a tin can for a kettle in the woods. Now the key to a can, tin can is that uh, inside the tin can it's got a liner in there to protect the food that, that was in it. So if you don't have it full of water when you're boiling it, you'll burn that liner off. Then your tea it tastes gross. I got these strike anywhere matches. When you're on the barrens like this, it's good just to crowd the can instead of putting it on top. It'll boil faster for you. Okay, today is nice and warm and sunny. And in the future, you might be cold and wet. So have everything ready. Today I tried to bring everything that we used to bring back in the day when we were fishing with trout poles all the time. And I use my backpack for a table here. And we have beans and sausage for a staple. Okay, this is the can opener we used to have back in the day. You can open your beer on one side and then a pointy thing for opening up your carnation milk and of course a sharp part for an open up the can. So all you do is just pierce it like that to start. Then once you got it pierced, you just go around. without wasting all your beans. Mm -mm, they're good. Can we get some bread?
Okay, let's make a beans and sausage bread. That'll be good. Of course, your dessert back in the day was always molasses bread. Crosby molasses. <clears throat> And that was your dessert. Of course, then you had one of your mom's good mugs. We could have a good cup of tea. Whew, I almost ran it over. Yeah, and that's what we had. Without making a mess here. Let's try her. <clears throat> 